April 1st. Happy April. I'm sitting here outside my son's flag football practice and something about this feels very fitting because when I started the vlog, it's like I found myself recording a lot of vlogs right here in the car outside of his practice. I hadn't done that in a while. So something feels very fitting about doing that. <clears throat> it's an unseasonably cold April. It's freezing right now. I wanted to give an update on all the names we buried. The last time I mentioned it on the vlog was in my September post, where I said we, we would be pushing to the spring. And I said, looking at March or April. Now here we are, it's April 1st, and I have not made the movie yet. I even sort of confessed a fear that the film might fall apart in the delay, just because when you have something in front of you, this business is so volatile. The way you assemble a film is an alchemy of things that have to come together in the right moment, at the right time, actor schedules, availability, money that's sort of committed, and then it's not really real until you're ready to shoot, and then the money's from a few different sources, so you have to it all kind of has to fall into place at the right time. And I sort of knew that the delay could make that all go away. And it kind of did, because the window of timing that I fell into for my financier for the film, things shifted. If you've been following this journey over the last couple of years that I've talked about, I was gonna make the film very small, then this financier came along and wanted to make it bigger. Then we, you know, gave time to that iteration of the film. They ended up fully committing to it for last May in this certain size of the film because of timing. The timing came together for it. As we've had new conversations now that it's in the new year, it's the spring, we're ready to make the film, the timing sort of shifted. And they still want to be involved, but they can't be involved at a scale that they could have last year which means we can't really make the film at the scale we were gonna make last year, which is causing me to pivot back to a smaller version of the film. And this is sort of the resilience I've talked about where you get so close to making a film at a certain budget where you know we were fully in prep, spending prep dollars, schedules were being written, and then COVID delays, then a year later, the film's still not made and it's not gonna be made in that version you've got to kind of start over if when that happens you just sort of fall apart or check out or quit or say i can't do this then that is the right thing to do is to just say look this is too hard i can't do this that's not a sentiment that i entertain there's a resilience and it's not just that i'm just like i can't quit i'd rather go do something else it's that a new energy sort of replaces the old energy and i get re-motivated to shift and to pivot I, you know, I get upset for like a day and I get frustrated and maybe have a little bit of a pity party for a minute. Like, man, I was so close. I had a window. But so quickly, I'm like, okay, what's the next move? What's the next pivot? Because I have a strong sense of purpose for this project and this film. And if you want to achieve something as hard as making a film, you have to have that sense of purpose and resilience for it to weather all of the starts and stops that will happen. Listen to Darius Martyr talk about making Sound of Metal. Man, when I hear him talk about that on the award circuit, one of the best films, probably the best film from 2020, it is so encouraging because he had so many stops and starts over the years where the film, you know, and they were going for a several million dollar budget. The money, you know, was committed. They were in prep and then the money wasn't there and he had to start over. And he talks really openly about it because he's just like, I feel like it's important that filmmakers know they're not going crazy when these things happen. And I'm just like, thank God that what I'm going through, as hard as it is, it's kind of the norm, not the exception. And so there's a solidarity I find in other filmmakers trying to make their films. And there's also kind of a patience and a resilience that forms of like, look, this is going to happen eventually. Like, I'm going to keep pushing it. And so you know, I'm pivoting again, and I'm kind of energized to pivot back to a smaller version of the film. I'm even going on a smaller version of the film than I was gonna in 2019, because, you know, I'd made Fair, I'd made Miter Premise. I wanted to make a bigger film. And at the time, that was the right goal, to try to keep stepping up. And so now, two years later, I'm just like, look, I'm just gonna make the film. Like, that is the goal. September's our window, September's our goal. And that's the new sort of target. And sometimes you feel like, am I fooling? Who am I fooling? Am I just fooling myself? 
believing something will happen that won't. But this is sort of what it takes. And if you can't do that, if you can't handle it, if you can't stomach it, you won't last. You won't be able to sort of <laughs> have a career because pushing these rocks up the mountains is the norm, not the exception. There is a point where it could be clear, okay, the timing's not right for this film, and I don't quite have a path to getting it made. I, I've got to pause it. I've just got to let it go. I've got to move on to something else, focus on another project. But for the past three years, there's always been a path to getting the film made. The path has changed. I moved it here, moved it here. Then, then it was going to be a bigger film with, you know, these bigger financiers. Now I'm moving it back. But as long as there's a path, I've got to follow the path. I've got to push the rock down the path. And there's a path right now for a smaller version of the film this September, so I'm pushing it forward, and I'm excited to. I'm energized. I'm super optimistic. The cast is still on board. They still believe in the project. But it's a journey. It's a marathon, and it takes a resilience that is so trying and testing. I was just <laughs> reminded of very famous um, advice that a lot of established filmmakers have said to people coming up. You know, what's the best advice for someone who's trying to break into the business? And they say... Here's the best advice I can give you. Quit now, you'll never make it. And that is a great piece of advice. Because if you listen to it, you would never going to make it. You would have never made it. If you have a ripcord, if, if you feel like quitting's in your vocabulary, or if there's something else you can do that will give you joy, that will make you happy, it's too hard to keep going if you've got those other things. And for the people who won't listen to that, who can't quit, or who, who when things keep having to be restart or fall apart or pivot, you kind of find the joy and the motivation and the energy and new life to, to pivot, to follow the new thing down the path. Those are the people who will make it. And I'm sort of calling that out. I'm prophesying to myself because I've made it very far. And yet it still feels like there's so much more that I see in front of me that I want to get to. So I'm believing that I'll get there. And if I do, as I've said before, it's just because of that resilience. So I hope that encourages someone. When it's hard, when, it's, when things fall apart, but when you have a project that's not taking root, that keeps having to be restarted or changing, but there's a new path to a new version, just keep following it. Keep following the path.